This is meant to be, um, this will fit the Series 5 as well. It's meant to have added security, whatever that means. Mm. Let's hope it fits. Two bolts there, and I reckon they line up with that. I don't know if you can see in there, but there's little orange clips. So we have to push these away to release the rod. There's two of these. So this is what you're removing when you're replacing it with this. Okay, these be orange clips hold the rod, but if you just got a screwdriver in the top and push it away to unclip the rods it's fairly simple next you want to push this wee rod out so again I'll try it with my fingers um, feeling that a wee screwdriver oh, sugar. just to push it out and you're taking this out then you're putting it in here. Rod out. Squeeze these two wee bits together to get that out. So we've taken it out there and we've pushed it in here and now you want to do the same with these two. Just be careful when you're taking these off the original part, not to break them. Red to red, black to blue. Also try and pick a dry day, make life a lot easier. Bloody Scotland. Set this wee bolt, just finger tight, so we can get the rods on. And you can slide that back and forward to take up any slack in the rods. Once you get that bolt on, um, you can click these few rods back in, and then we'll swivel this round. Finger in, sorry. We can fit that in as well. Okay. I found with putting that back rod on um, it was a bit tricky with this bolt in so take that off you can drop it down and you can get your finger in there to click that rod back into place Make sure it's working okay before we go any further. 
Let's try to strap the cable in now before we feed it through. Have extra cable ties as well. Um, don't just rely on the, the ones that come with the pack. Have bigger ones as well for, for underneath when the cables run along the chassis. It always comes in handy. I know I'm using this drill um, to take the screws out. Uh, don't be tempted to use the drill to put the screws back in again. Just use a screwdriver. Um, it's always a danger using the drill that when you're putting the screws in that you'll strip the threads. very tricky to try and feed that wire through there and try and catch it to get it through this wee hole so I've just used a bit of soldering wire pushed it through attached it and hopefully I'll pull that and hopefully that should come out and bother there it is feed that through and then pull enough out um, that is going to go inside the vehicle, okay. So using the Stanley knife, try and cut this sort of shape, just so these sit um, side by side, and you fit that back on. When you're lifting this up, if you've got the light strip on there, um, just be delicate, careful with these wires. Just tuck that to the side. Okay, feed the cable all the way along from the rear, all the way along the chassis. This is when you'll need extra tie straps. Tie strap at every foot or so along the existing cable. And then the cables run up through this rubber grommet. Um, this rubber grommet is underneath the passenger seat. Okay, and you're wanting to maybe just pierce a wee hole in that. Feed your cable through. Then use some sealant so the water doesn't get through. Okay. So this is the passenger seat underneath the passenger seat, and there's access to that rubber grommet there. Okay, that's where the cable is going to come through, and then try and push it that way, and then out towards the salt. So the rubber grommet is in here, you're going to feed the cable along under the carpet and then along this carpet. Like this. Okay. So I've managed to cut a tiny hole and poke this up. What a pain in the backside that was. That's probably the most annoying bit of the whole process.
So that's it going up into the cab. Poked a wee hole there and managed to push it through, which was a nightmare. That's it done. I will, at a later date, put a bit of sealant on this just to stop any ingress of water. I'll push the seat back. And you can see the wire. So just push the wire round the back, in the back of this vent, and then through the carpet here, and then push it out here. There is a split in the carpet underneath, you can see it. There's a split in the carpet. So once you push it through there, you'll be able to just tuck it underneath that carpet. Let's pull it, that'll pop out. So, it's these two wires here. And the booklet says blue with red trace and blue with a black trace. So very gently with a stand knife, I'm going to peel these back so the wire underneath is bare um, and solder this one. So that's the one. Black to the blue with the red trace and red to the blue with the black trace. So I've just stripped them back so they're bare and then twisted them on and now I'll solder them. So when you're soldering, hold the soldering iron on the wire for a wee minute, no for a wee minute, for a few seconds so the wire heats up. Um, then when you introduce the solder wire, the wire, the solder wire will penetrate the copper wire. Okay, and that's it. So that's both wires soldered. Um, now we'll tape them up, stick the plug back in and then give it a test, see if it works. Fingers crossed. Plugs in. Wires insulated. Just to fit the trim back on. Okay, I've checked it and it's working great. Um, so, before I seal it all back up, I'm just going to give everything a good squirt. I'm going to WD. While I'm in here. it as well. Okay, let's see what that's me done. Are we? Happy with that. It's unlocked. You can open it. Don't bother. What we're saying, locking. Nothing. 
Let's now move. Brilliant. Hand lock. So, chuffed. <laughs>